Oh, Jason. Hello, oh, mate. How are you? Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, mate. How are you? Well, I'm just messing about with the lettuce. What's going on here? Just messing doing a little up. lettuce yeah. playing, really. Solitons, you haven't seen Steve anywhere, have you? I haven't seen him for a while. So I think he's got his head in the book or something. Oh, he's always reading these books, see? I know. That, uh, Enough about the books. Oh, hello. Hello, Jason. Hello, mate. How are you? Well, I'm OK. I've Where have you been? Well, I've got a bone to pick with the both of you. What? Your autopop valve. You used it to get here quickly, and I've had to drive as fast as I can to get here. Now, I've had it really tightly, didn't take me anywhere. I've had it really loosely, and I just ran, ended up in random places. And I just thought, you know what, just finger tight, just make it nice, as, it's, as you taught me. No, still didn't wear. You know what your problem was though, don't mm -hmm. you? You're a scientist and not a grower. We're not still doing this science based well, science well, you know, grow, are we? Can you make it work for me? No, not really, because you're not a grower. <laughs> I think you're going to have to spend some time here and practice. Do some growing. Well, let's yeah. practice then. Let's go on with the episode of Out of Water Pots. These are going to teach you to grow. Certainly are. Welcome back at the Autopot R&D facility with Jason Hello. and myself and the scientist. Yeah. Can we cut out this theme? Can't we all just get along scientists and growers? We'll see how that pans out. Jason. We will, yeah. You've had your fun with the aqua valve. Now let's just get along. We see how your education lesson goes on over this uh, next day also. I'm looking forward to it. We've got some great plants on display, some phenomenal systems, some that you've never seen before. Yeah. Really excited to show you what Jason's got in store. And we thought, what better place to come and show the gravity-fed, the best gravity-fed system that money can buy and come straight to Autopot headquarters. And let's see what we can learn. Yeah. So okay. we're going to go up and down the aisles and Jason's going to show us what's been going on at the facility. So, we're in front of the propagation trolley. We are. We've got four levels with the 45 litre tank at the top, feeding all the aqua valves and the trees. It's looking good, isn't it? It is. But I'm not going to take all the credit for it. You did a little bit of the setup, didn't you? I did, I did it all. <laughs> oh, so wasn't you who done this? I'm just talking about it. Oh. He saw it in a book, as if. <laughs> it was a good book. We're here now for practical, though. So, gravity fed, that's the basis of all autobot systems, is that it's gravity fed, no electricity needed. First level, we're doing, I say we, I'm going to use we. Okay. We're, <laughs> we're doing some trials, LEDs, the first set above the lettuce. What have we got going on with this valve and how's all this working, Jason? So in essence, how it works, as you said, it's all gravity fed. So they've got the tank at the top. I put the water in, pH stabiliser and fertiliser, just low level fertiliser because they're not heavy consuming plants. Yeah. And then in essence what happens, the water pushes, the, gra uh, the gravity pressure pushes the water down in each level and the aqua valve basically controls the flow of the water. So it floods to 20 mil and what you've got the plant sitting on is a cocoa pad that needs to be pre-soaked first overnight at 4.5. Once it's pre-soaked then it's all set and ready to use for the following day got a root control sheet on the top. I put the pH in here about five, six in the reservoir. And then the water simply just fills each tray. And then the capillary action of the cocoa pad pulls it up to the surface, creates a damp surface for the plant to then simply take the water as and when it needs it. So as each valve empties, it allows within about 30 seconds or 30 minutes, sorry, to refill. And then it will just, the plants will take it, consume it all and then it will replenish again. So it's just a, a one-way system, no recirculation, and perfect because the humidity rises from the surface of this damp cloth for the root control sheet and, and sort of pilfers up through, filters up through the, through the plants and keeps them all night, the microenvironment, all nice and humid. So this matting is similar to copper matting? This is, yeah, it's exactly the same. It's just sheets of copper. It's, co it's copper-coated one side, and it just simply stops the roots from penetrating into the cocoa so when you want to take the plants off then you're not tearing Ste the roots Stephen's away. never really seen much of this stuff actually out no. in, in the field. You only see pictures. He, he, he struggles with some of them at, at, at times, don't you? It's the words I like. Yeah. You know what is nice though? Is the lights. Mm. I like the lights. Mm. Very simple to use as well. 
They are. I mean, I've been playing around with these ones for about a year now, and they're quite cheap and cheerful, but they seem quite effective. The yeah. plant growth is pretty she, good across the board. Seems to be doing very well, to be yeah. honest with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's all looking good. You've got the Razer LED underneath here as well, which is the PFB light. That's tunable as well, isn't it? Yeah, so you can alter the red spectrum or you can alter the blue spectrum. Predominantly, this was designed for aquatics. Mm. But from what I've seen, growth, if I'm playing around with spectrums because I can reduce the intensity down when I've got small plants and then gradually increase the intensity of the red and the blue spectrums, it works really well. But it is predominantly designed for fish. They're a nightmare to put together. It is a bit well. of a pain with, with regards to these hanging units. Yeah, it could have been uh, slightly better thought of. Definitely. How long have you had these cocoa mats in use for? And how long can they last? About a year. You've got a good 12 months out of it. And these are continually, continually used. So we will bring herbs on, we'll bring plants on, we'll swap plants over in the grow room. So these are, I get a good 12 months out of each cocoa pad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and looks off. If you're looking for ease of use, low maintenance, multi-level growing, this is probably the best system that I've seen. Gravity fed, no electricity, multiple, multiple, multi-level, brilliant. Mm. We'll move over to the next trolley and see what's been going on over there. So, show us a little bit more what's going on here then, please, Jason. Right, so the idea is I'm trying to design something like this trolley, yeah. but make it look sexy. Yeah, okay. And the idea is to place it into supermarkets, and to place it into high-class restaurants. So okay. the restaurants, the supermarkets can keep their plants alive. Yeah. And secondly, the, the restaurants, they can grow their own microherbs and put them in their dishes when they go out to the customers. So what I had initially been doing is trying to use the cocoa pads that we just talked about previously on the other trolley. Yeah. But the problem is I can't use cocoa pads for health and safety reasons because potential bacteria growing them in kitchens. So what I've decided to do is start using grated plates, raised platforms. So I don't know if I could show you here. So if I lift this up, you'll see, if I show that to the camera underneath, you'll see roots hanging in suspension there. And all this is, on top of that, is paper sat on top. It's called confetti, yeah. sheets of confetti. And I just sprinkle the seeds on top. It's po totally biodegradable, so you can throw it away and it'll compost. Uh, and I've found that this seems to be the best way for fast germination, easy germination and speed of crop. So what I've done, instead of using the big trays, I've just taken smaller trays just to get the principle right. But at the same time, what I'm doing is identical crops on all levels, but trying different lights from different manufacturers yeah. to see what the effect on growth is. Mm. What on earth is this, though? It well, that looks like it's something to do with this propagation. It is. So this is one of many grated trays that I've come across. Um, I think these are actually being used in London underground, the growing underground. Uh, so what they're doing is using matting on top, but they're flooding and draining. We're using flood and drain benches. What I've just showed you with these herbs, these small microherbs, is just a smaller grated tray similar to this. But obviously I can fit these in there. And I, and I just want to do small trials instead of trying to fill large areas and find out that what I've tried to do didn't actually work. Yeah. But now I'm finding out after two or three months of trial and error that this is the most effective way to actually make autopot work with microherbs. These seem to be coming along pretty uh, effectively, don't they? Well, these were sown on Friday. Yeah. So what are we now? We're, we're what are we, Tuesday? Mm. Tuesday, so yes, yeah, four or five days. These will be ready by the end of the week. The mustard. Crop will be re ready be to ready. harvest. Ready is that to another harvest. invitation to dinner? That is another invitation oh, to dinner. Yes. Well, I wouldn't turn that down. Yeah. Cress and Basil. Cress yes. and Basil. <laughs> They're the name of uh, my dogs as well. Oh, are they? Yeah. <laughs> but they will be when they get two dogs. <laughs> <laughs> that there, brilliant. And I think what we'll get is uh, some photos of Jason. So when the episode goes out, we can actually cut to some photos of fully grown lettuce. Yeah. Because these are going to really green up over the next few days. Yeah, you're, I mean, you'll notice the greenness the, by, by the, this time tomorrow. That won't be lime green anymore. It'll just be fully dark green. Yeah. yeah. Mm. There's some lovely citrus plants behind us, so I'd love Jason to explain what's going on in them. So let's move on and see the citrus. Yeah. So these remind me of the plants that I used to have in our polyton. These look like some lovely citrus plants. That's exactly what they are, Thomas. They're, they're, called, they're from Japan and they're called a yuzu plant. And they're traditionally grown for the actual peel of the lemon, not yeah. the actual lemon. So they basically take the lemon off, put it into dishes, and then they just eat it with whatever they eat it with. Um, it's spiny, 
It's tricky to grow, especially if you don't have the right pH. And what happens is when I got these plants from the wasabi company in Dorchester, I brought them in, put them straight into cocoa, put a citrus feed in from Growth Technology, and forgot to do the pH. Yeah. For about a month, I was wondering why my plant was sad. And then I suddenly realised... You've seen some sad telltale signs. Mm. So you're telling me, mm. as soon as you saw a deficiency, yeah. you didn't just run to the shop and ask no. for bottles of Calmag. No. Some other bottles of magic that can sort out the deficiency. No. You just adjusted the adjusted pH. Adjusted the pH. That's how important it is. Yeah. Adjusted the pH. And you can see the new growth of it is, is perfect. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah, it looks, looks, yeah, yeah. looks fabulous. You can see the, the distorted growth. Yeah. When, the, when the pH was in the wrong range, it was about 7.2. Because this is cocoa, I'm more, uh, you should have a lower pH of around 5.5, five, 5.6. Five, five, and obviously, because it's a citrus tree, it likes it a little bit more acidic. And obviously, that's fixed the problem by correcting the pH in the reservoir. Excellent. So, rule number one, lesson number one, is don't just run to the shop to get the bottle of magic that's going to sort all deficiencies. More often than not, it comes down to incorrect pH. So make sure your pHs are in the correct bands, and if that's sorted, then you can start having a look at deficiencies within the soil or the cocoa. Um, brilliant lesson, brilliant plan to demonstrate that as well. Mm. What pots, what system is this that you've got these in? This is a new one that we've, well, it was designed hand in hand with the Auto 9, which we'll probably show you in a little while, and it's literally an Auto 3 XL. Because the racking systems in the US where we were put, installing these systems into couldn't quite fit an Auto 9 properly in that level, we had to design a three just to fill off the gap at the end. Yeah. So literally it's a 25 litre pot that people are used to yeah. with a tray that can house three, three of them, them yeah. with one aqua valve controlling all three. Cool. Seems to be doing pretty well. Yeah, no, it's fine. When the pH is sorted. When the pH is right. <laughs> yeah. We're going to move around and have a look, a good look at now at the rest of the plants. That's the propagation sorted. And again, we wanted to make the point of how important pH is. So let's crack on with the rest of the lab and That's see it. what we've got. So. We've got the basic four pot, mm. auto pot system mm. with the 15 litre pots. And what is it that we're growing in here? Uh, what this is is a little trial or a little sort of exhibit of a Q melon. And a Q melon's from a gentleman called James Wong. Well, he, sell, he promotes the seeds. And literally, it's a little tiny watermelon, yeah. but it tastes a cucumber. Yeah. So they're probably about the size of your fingernail, and they just kick them out left, right and centre. You can see some flowers in, in, in the background there starting to set. But once they, I've only just plotted these plants up probably three days ago, so looking a little bit sad, they're sort of finding their way now. But within two or three weeks, you'll find that the vines will be all the way up to here, little tiny yellow flowers producing a tiny little lookalike watermelon that tastes a cucumber. And you just add them to the salads, it's really quite nice. And this is all being fed off. Is it that tank that's being fed off? Yeah, it's the been there? all the plants around me now are all being fed from a 225 litre blue flexi tank. Um, all the soils that I'm using are canna, and the fertilizer that I'm using in the reservoir is canna as well. Okay. They're all looking really nice now. Yep. So, how long before this is at the top and producing fruits? I'd probably say within six weeks it'll be at the top, within a week it'll be producing fruits. This looks really interesting. Mm. I've never seen a plant where it's scared to me like that. <laughs> What's going on in there? Well, it's a new design, Steve. And what, what I've, we've got a market for big commercial glass houses in the States. And a lot of Americans are very fond of using smart pots yeah. or fabric pots. Obviously, there's a way that you can irrigate them. And the options are either drippers or hand watering. So what I've decided to try and design is a irrigation system that uses the aqua valve. So in the far corner, there's an aqua valve and aqua valve cover that's connected to the blue tank again behind. And then there's a smart pot. And if I lift this up there, and this is obviously to keep it nice and dark so I don't get algae. So if I didn't have this here, the roots would stay in there. But because I have it there, and I want to be able to keep, it, to keep the algae out, I've designed this skirt. So the skirt goes halfway up the smart pot and then hooks around up to a square meter tray and then literally you've got the light reflecting off it and then what I've got in the, actually growing in the pot is a Carolina Reaper, which is one of the hottest chilli plants in the world and then six different tomato plants around the edge of the, um, the smart pot. These are going to grow up and then run across the beams above our heads but what they'll also do, once the, low, once the fruit is set and I take the leaves off and I'm just left with the stem that'll act, act as a natural cage to help support the Carolina Reaper to so stop yeah. it from falling over. Yeah. 
But what I'm really trying to sort of get from this plant skirt is how to stop the roots getting into the aqua valve that's irrigating the tray in the other corner. And what I've done, I've basically taken the aqua valve and the aqua valve cover and I've sat that in a root control sock. Yeah. But I've sat inside the root control sock, I put a piece of stainless steel and I've sat the aqua valve and the aqua valve cover on that stainless steel. And then you've got this protective wall of copper that will stop the roots from getting in there. So I'm just having to play with it at the moment. But the idea is, is for the big commercial growers in glass houses in the States and Canada, to have an option to be able to use the smart pots in trays with our technology. That's brilliant. And it looks really healthy mm. and fabulous. Yeah, no. We'll get some see. shots in there, show you the roots coming out of the cloth pots as well. Yeah. Thomas loves his carrots and he's gone straight over to the, to the truck, so I think uh, he's going to need your help with okay. the next truck over there. I'll give him a hand. Hello, Thomas. Hello. How are you? I'm good. I'm looking for some carrots. All right. I'm well, looking at what's going on You'll have to wait a couple of months yet, son. Okay. <laughs> so what do you want to tell you? Right. It's, it's an aqua box spider. Not massive in the hydro industry. Yeah. But it's getting bigger in the allotment yeah. sort of industry. So this is a veg truck from okay. the, from uh, some guys, Paul and um, and um, Joe. They own the company, and they send me products to have a little play with. And all that is really is an aqua valve in a clam shaped shell. So that's connected to the reservoir behind you, Thomas. Yeah. And the gravity pressure pushes the water into this well, and then you've got 12 little capillary strips all the way around, and yeah. they actually go underneath the soil. So you thread different... these through the soil. Exactly. Like a spider. Like a spider. Okay. And then what happens, the water floods the tray. Yeah. The water gets consumed, gets sucked up by the strips, distributed under the soil, so you, like drippers, if you had a dripper, you'd lose most of the water on the surface because it's hot. Yeah. But because this is distributing water underneath, you're not getting an immense amount of evaporation wow. and you're making sure that the plant gets the moisture that it needs because the roots are obviously below. So I've just started off with utilising six strips because the plants are only small. And then once the plants start getting bigger and bigger, I'll bring the other strips down and then I'll feed 12 strips. Right. And okay. they'll distribute the water in 12 different places around the bed. Makes... <laughs> Really, really effective irrigation. Just and uh, you know, people say, "Oh, you know, it might take up a bit of space," but in the big scheme of things, if you have to keep watering areas square meters and square meters. So, if you've got a, an allotment and you've got a large bed, yep, perfect. Absolutely perfect. We'll irrigate up to about 1.2 square meters, so many, pretty much most standard raised beds. There was one other thing I, 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 I forgot to keep mentioning. Is I've noticed there's like these these little spirit bubbles yeah on, on things on, on things what, what's that all about really that's just a little not a bit of smoke and mirrors but what it is it's just to allow the customer when they use the aqua valve cover over the top of the aqua valve when they use the aqua box is that they know that they've got it level ah. they know that either the aqua valve and the aqua valve cover sitting in a tray is level because the spirit level tells you yeah and the same on the aqua box spider so it's very simple just to level it off by pressing it in the corner and then you know that you've got equal distribution of water actually entering that box and spreading out as it goes into the bed. Perfect. Brilliant. So Jason, I'm a bit confused. What have we got on here? We've got we've got the Auto Pot 9, the Easy to Grow, and the Auto 8. And what's that? That's the new Flexi Tank, Thomas. Flexi Tank Pro. Flexi Tank Pro? It looks good. But it doesn't look like you've designed it. It's no. Just, who designed this? There was a gentleman that works for us called Dan Gulliver had a little bit of an input. Of course, there was some imperfections in it. Yeah. yeah. I knew you had you had them designed. It's really good. Mm. But, no, it is. It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> it's double layered, isn't it? It's actually single layered, but it's really thick, completely yeah. light tight. Not like the blue one that isn't light tight, but the difference with the blue one, it takes away the UV out of the light, the blue stops it so you don't get an algae build up. This one is just, this is a high end version. So this is the Rolls Royce of Flexi Tanks. Probably won't sell as many, but we are starting to sell them. Mm -hmm. They look really good. What on earth is that piece of plastic there? That's a 16 mil or a 13 mil inline filter. So we recommend that on every system, whether it's a six mil pipe, four mil pipe, 13 mil pipe, 16 mil pipe, whichever way you're measuring your pipe, you should always use a filter straight after the tank or internally inside the tank. And then regularly check it, probably once every couple of weeks, minimum of a month, wash it out,
clean it and that collects any sediment and stops the pipes from blocking. These are very cost effective as well, so they cost you next to nothing anyway. Yeah. So we're just a, a cheap, easy way of securing that your plants aren't gonna get full of all exactly. nasty bits yeah. and bobs. These are 25 litre pots, yeah. there's nine pots in that yeah. system. And again, auto aqua valve, gravity yeah. fed. And the size of these plants, is, these are like, this is a screen system for big plants. And you can fit an animal, what's that, a 1.2 metre square? It'll fit in a 1.2 square metre tent, not a problem, but they were specifically designed for a customer over in the States who's growing medical marijuana. And um, we basically designed them for racking systems and they grow nine plants in there. Um, but what I'm doing here, I've got three plants in Biobiz, I've got three plants in Canna, I'm getting different growth in both of them, in both of the, the soils. I'm using a can of feed and then the middle row where I haven't got any pots at the moment, I'm actually going to plonk in some wasabi. Wasabi. So nice wasabi, very hot, very spicy. So I'm going to grow this for a little while in this pot. Then I'm going to stick this, or the other two as well, in 25 litre pots, put it in the middle. And the reason I wanted to put them in the middle and grow the chilies big is because they don't like full sun. They like to be in dappled, damp yeah. sunlight. So what I'm gonna do is once these are ready, I'll put them in a 25 litre pot, put them in the Auto 9XL, and hopefully they'll thrive and get enough light and enough moisture and humidity. And in two years time, I should be able to crop them. Nice. That's another invitation for dinner. So is that a two year long crop, two that is? Two year long crop. Wow. Yeah. I know you are really interested in the herbs. Mm. I wish there was some way mm. of showing people how these smelt, because phenomenal smell. Rub your fingers in there. Well, don't you them remember them scratch and sniff scratch. cards years ago? <laughs> don't you think we could reinstall some of them with some micro herb scents? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, idea, what have we got going on here, Jason? We've got the easy to grow system. Yeah, it's the easy to grow module. So, I've using white pots, I'm using green pots, green yeah. trays, black pots, just because it was a bit of a mix and a muddle. I've got one section here, and I think eight pots of sweet Thai basil which is a traditional herb from Thailand. Absolutely, the smell and the taste is stunning. What we ate with the tomato soup last night, that's, what this, that's where the flavor come, came yeah. from in the tomatoes. And then we move along, we've got a lemon Thai basil, which is like eating lemon sherbet. We tried it earlier, didn't we? And then at the very end, we've got a spicy Thai basil, which in all honesty, doesn't taste spicy at all. I don't know why they call it spicy basil, but it's very popular in the Asian community. So we just grow it. People come upstairs and they just they just eat it all and put it in the various salads and things like that. And these are the easy to grow. Easy to grow modules. So there's two eight and a half litre pots, two pl two plant pots per tray, and one aqua valve running two pots. And then all the girls do is is cut and come again. So they'll come in, they'll cut it, and then within a week later it's grown back again. So we'll probably get maybe eight nine months out of these basil plants, and then we'll rejuvenate them and put some new ones in. Now it's not for me to question your grown, but it's not, I don't know what's happened either, you have not much grown. In These are new invisible autopot plants. Oh, the new invisible plants out, do you see? What it is really... Well, you don't it, see them. These are two, what you see is what you don't get. <laughs> it's a new product based on the Auto 9 XL, but we're utilising the 15 litre square pots and the 8.5 litre pots. In essence, it's one tray that accommodates eight pots so you could bring your plants on in these systems and the great thing is you can then take it up and put it in your individual pots afterwards so you can have these all nestled together in your greenhouse in your grow room bring your plants on because obviously they don't need a great deal of spacing while they're, they're they're coming on and then once you're happy that the plants have established and you're ready to move them into the single tray unit you literally just pick them up and off you go and swap them around Good system. Yeah, when, no. when do you think these will be out? These probably will be out, I would probably say, in about the next six weeks. So by the time you're watching this, these will be available to, yeah. to buy in the UK? It's called the, I think it will be called the Auto 8. The Auto 8. Happy Auto days. 8. Now, you've got a bit of a bee in your bonnet, haven't you? <sighs> well, I have. Uh, whilst I've been in here today, I've, been, I've uh, it, this is a fabulous grow room as well, by the way. And we're going to have to get some of these guys for back. Back at, home. Back home, back at our lab. So let's have a little look over here. Right. Now, we've got Natchapol, yeah. your little army. Yeah. Uh, I'm very impressed by these, to say the least. It's 
Jason's little army of natural pollinators. And if we open the lid here, we have some bees. Hmm? They're the bees' knees. They are the bees' knees. Why do you use bees? If I didn't have bees, I wouldn't be able to get the tomatoes to set, I wouldn't be able to get the chilies to set. In fact, I wouldn't be able to get anything to set in here unless I came in early in the morning, shook the stems, knocked the pollen off. So I have to have the bees to pollinate all the flowers in here. Now, you imagine the amount of flowers that are on the chilli plants yeah. in the background. I'll be there forever. So these guys are brought in probably every three to four weeks. A new box comes in because some of them get eaten by spiders, some of them die, some of them escape. And I just keep bringing them in and they pollinate all my flowers for me. And they have a, have a queen bee that she, she sits in the bottom down there. And then all the drone bees, they go off, do all the pollination, come back and create all the, all the, all the, um, the honey that yeah. the, the queen bee can feed off. You can't half hear them as well. Yeah, they buzz like mad. They buzz. They can get a bit riled up, so you have to be careful because sometimes they'll come out and swarm. I've had to run out of the grow room at one stage. Oh, well, that's enough of that, so I think we'll put them back there. Oh, here we go. Here's, here's the biggest one in here. But what's your plan B? <sighs> OK, enough of that. We've got some really good plants around the corner. We're going to go and do a run down there, and actually, we're going to dispel hmm? a really commonly held belief about the size of the pot and the amount of time that you need to veg your plants. Mm. So let's move around the corner and see what Jason's got going on. Well, Jason, mm. this is the most impressive part of um, your R&D section for me. Mm. Uh, these large chilli plants that we've got behind us in, I think, 25 litre XLs. Yep. yep. Uh, do you want to tell us a bit more what mm. you've got going on here? So what, how it all came about is that Steve from MPK oh, challenged yeah. me. Really? Yeah, apparently okay. scientists can grow better than growers. So we lay down the gauntlet. So Steve came up with a formula of what we, what we do with regards to soil. We're using biobiz soil. We're using additives, azos and charge. And then I decided to put another little spin on it because he didn't think I could grow plants in a basic garden centre food. Right, OK. So in the blue tank here, we've got four plants all in XLs with standard miracle Grow 395 from the, from the garden centre. Yeah. And then the following plants, but you can see a difference between these four plants and these six plants down here. You can see the difference in flower production. And as, we, as I go down, I'll show you. So these four plants are fed on miracle Grow from the garden centre yeah. with various additives in some of the pots. And then if I go down here, I've got some plants that are grown in smart pots. And I wanted to see what the effect of the, the actual structure up above was. And if you can see, it's much more branching. The internode is much tightly spaced compared to the plants that are grown in the plastic pots. But the, also the difference is of the plants that are being fed from this white tank using General Hydroponics three-part flora series, which is one of my favourite nutrients because you can mix the formulas yeah. at the stage of the plant and it's very, very clean, is the flower production on these six plants being fed with this general hydroponics three-part flora series is just phenomenally different compared to the miracle Grow. The miracle Grow, You can blatantly see that. You can see you? the difference. They look a lot darker. In fact, I probably tend to think that they are actually being overfed. Right. And the EC is probably a little bit too high because I can see a little bit of leaf drop on the miracle Grow plants, whereas I've got a nice colour on these six plants and I've got huge amounts of flower production. So to say that Steve's right in what he says, that I can't grow a probably better quality plant with the Miracle Grow because it is a cheaper yeah. fertiliser, but I can get good quality growth from that fertiliser, but not the production and the quality of plant that I can get from the General Hydroponics three-part flora series. And once again, pH is important. So I'm um, EC probably about 1.8 for these chilli plants. And because I'm growing in soil, always 5.8. Yeah. OK, listen, we've had enough of this now. <laughs> enough pontificating about your beautiful plants. And they are beautiful plants. The biggest point I want to make is not how much of a better grower you are. Cough <laughs> is environment. You see the difference between these plants and the plants in our lab, which are intense. A good environment but this is a perfect environment. You've just seen the humidity being sprayed. You can hear the humidifiers kicking in. Mm. And it's just the biggest point that we try and make on the show is environment is everything. And you can literally see the difference. 
Better grower, maybe. Environment, definitely. And practice makes perfect. And Steve needs a lot of practice. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about practice. I want your top tips on growing tomatoes, and you've got some phenomenal tomatoes around the corner. We go and have a look at them. Yeah, the first thing I want to point out is how old are these tomato plants? They're coming into their 12 month in May. So they've been, they literally were planted up just before we did Chelsea last year, and they've been basically growing and cropping all year round. So I thought the longer the veg period, the bigger the pot has got to get to accommodate mm. the root mass. Mm. But this sort of flies in the face of that theory mm. because you have got, I've, I've sort of measured by either size of these vines, they're over 10 metres long. One vine into one 15 metre pot and support, and the whole run is just supported there. Strapped up, and they're just continuously, continuously producing really flavourful tomatoes. The health of them, the whole run, we're going to show you the run now, it's just perfection. It's probably the, in my opinion, the nicest part of the grow room. And also, it's given me inspiration to start a, a myth, a myths podcast or a myth mm. blog, where it's obvious you don't always need the bigger mm. pot, because you'd say a year worth of veg growing and, and flowering plants, you're going to need a 40, 50, 60 litre pot. Mm. It's absolutely blown me away that mm. this is a 15 litre pot, and they look absolutely phenomenal. What, what's been going on over the last year with these? Well, like you say, there's, there, there is a, a big fallacy that you need a big pot to grow a big plant, and it's not true, particularly not with auto pot, because the watering and the scheduling is there and it's accurate all the time. As long as I can keep the roots, which we can, inside that pot and not allow them to escape into the aquavalve, then it's, it works. And if you think about a rock wall bag that traditionally commercial growers use to grow tomatoes, cucumbers, if you think of the volume that that actually occupies and how long those tomato plants in that in a commercial sort of environment, it's probably the amount of the 15 litre soil, a slab, is probably 15, maybe 20 litres. So, and quite often they have three tomato plants on that slab. So when people think that you need a bigger pot to grow a bigger plant, it's not true. It's all about delivery of nutrients, continuity of nutrients, and making sure that the air temperature, the environment, the root temperature is all as accurate as it can be. And if you think about it in the opposite effect of bonsai growing, some people can grow bonsais for 200 years in a tiny little pot and just keep pruning the roots as long as they're feeding it accurately. So you can grow a big plant in a big plot, but you can also grow a big plant in a small plot. And it's all about accuracy and the delivery of the nutrients at the correct and the right time. Phenomenal. We're going to show the show. We're going to show you all the rest of the grow room. And we'll be back to finish off with Jason in a moment. Have a look around. Let's have some more of that tomato soup. All right, yeah, it's okay. great. Jason, thank you very much for a lovely two days. It's been fantastic looking around the R&D facility. Everything that the auto pot can grow, I've personally learned a hell of a lot. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for your hospitality My as pleasure, well, guys. Jason. Been great. Thanks for coming down. Me and you, we've got to get back to Liverpool. <laughs> me, you mean? Please tell me you've got one of them for me. Uh, sorry, no. Well, you've got to catch the bus. I've got to go. I'm busy. It works fine. Nice one. See you later, Steve. See you later. Thomas. <laughs> got here before him. I can't have got here before him. He's the valve. Hey, have you seen there? Uh, have you seen Thomas?
Yes, lad. What's happening? What's happening? Where is everyone? Don't know. Do you know where Thomas is? No. Been messing with them genetics again, haven't you? Yeah. Told you this had happened, didn't I? Mm. It's what happens, lad. Oh, don't start, Barry. What are we going to do? I don't know what you're going to do. I'm just Barry Bills, mate. No.